Hi there guys, welcome back and today I'm in the 520D Tora G31. A um, little bit different to last week in the 530D saloon, but we're going to have a look at the car, look around the features and see what this car offers over the saloon, the practicality, the benefits of it, handling differences between the saloon and the Tora, um, load space area, uh, and just have a bit of a walk around of the car really and just see how good this car would be to live with on a day-to-day -day basis and could you drive this car after coming from say a three litre uh, six cylinder down to a four, four cylinder two litre. So let's get going then. So this car does have numerous cool features, one of which including is the fact that this tower gate uh, can open in two ways. So you can open the top section like this, but what this allows you to do is, is to um, stop shopping for instance falling out the back, you can just put stuff in, it's quicker. If you've got pets for instance like dogs, uh, and if you lift the whole boot up they're going to run off, whereas with this it just contains them within the boot. So this is a real nice feature that I think a lot of people probably don't realise that Taurus have within the BMW range. The 3 Series Taurus also do this as well. It's just a real nice, um, real nice touch and just adds to that everyday usability factor of having an estate car. You can also open the boot uh, with the movement of your foot if your hands are full as well. As my hands aren't full, I can just open it with a button. So, as you can see, there's a substantial amount of space in this car over the saloon. And I think the main thing as well is the aperture is a lot bigger. So in a saloon, you've only got so big to get parcels or items in. Whereas this, you know, you could easily get, um, if you went out to Iceland or you went to buy yourself a TV or you went to buy yourself something very large, like a fridge, you could just get that in the boot, drop the seats. 570 litres of load space in this car. And when you drop the seats, it goes up to somewhere around 1700 litres. So it's such a usable space and a practical, almost like a van when you drop the seats down, you don't have any occupants in the back. Nice feature as well is the load netting. Uh, once it uh, is collapsed down, the, the, the parcel, parcel tray or, or load net can drop down and store nicely under here, which is good. If you have a tow bar, tow bar in this car, there's an option of a button in the tailgate, press the button, electronically deployable, opens out. Uh, and then you know you can close away again and stop you knocking your shins on it if you're walking past so this is really good and also it makes the car look really nice uh, aesthetically if it's out of the way tucked underneath the bumper it also has the split folding uh, 40 20 40 on the boot and you can just pull these buttons slow slow fold down of the seats and suddenly you have 1700 liters of very useful and practical storage so let's take a look inside this fire suit. So as you can see, with the full flat load area, there's no lip and parcels can be stored in here with ease. Also, these clip clips here allow the load netting to be clipped to that and then up to the ceiling. And then what happens there is it creates a divide to stop large objects flying forward into the cabin area where the two people are sitting. So this is quite a nice touch as well. So it creates literally a curtain between the load area and the front two seats. So other features the car has, it has the M Sport Plus package with the 19 inch 664 alloy wheels, which are standard on the 520Ds. If you actually upgrade to the 530D, the wheels change to the 20 inch MV, I think they're called V759 alloy wheels. So they're now standard on the M Sport Plus package, but if you get the two litre, these are standard wheels, which look really good and give the car a nice stance. Also at the front of the vehicle, you'll notice it has uh, headlight washers and adaptive LED headlamps, which are part of the visibility package 
uh, that this car has as an option. And you'll also notice that the G31 and G30 for that, uh, that matter has um, headlights that join up with the kidney grille. Now this is um, one of the first cars that did this in the BMW lineup. And the, which are, what I mean by that is they used to be body going through here and now the headlight completely marries up with the kidney grills. But I think aesthetically it looks brilliant. So this is the latest BMW key that comes standard with the 520D. This is uh, the standard key, not the one that parks itself. Uh, but as you can see, it's a vast improvement over the current key um, that BMW are producing. And it feels more premium, lot weight, and you've got the nice BMW M colors along the side of it. It comes with the M sort Plus package, it's really nice. So this 5 Series G31 is built on the OKL platform which is a new platform as of 2017 for BMW. And the vehicles under that platform, um, it, shares with, well, it shares the platform with the new G11 and G12 7 Series. It's made up of aluminium, carbon fiber, and high strength steels to give this car obviously agility, lightweight, good performance. The 0-60 on this car, bearing in mind, again, only a two litre, four cylinder, it's, it comes up in 7.8 seconds, um, but that, that weight save um, by going to these composites and different materials has made this car 220 pounds or 100 kilos lighter than the old F10 5 Series, which, it, which makes the car only around 1635 kilos, which for a car of this size and something that's giving you this much load capacity is very impressive considering um, what else is out there and you look at the weights of other cars. So 1635 kilos for a 5 Series Tour, which I think is very good, very, very good. I think there are some sports cars that are getting close to that. Um, so in terms of the engine, it's a two litre, four cylinder turbo diesel engine, kicking out 190 brake horsepower and 295 um, foot-pounds of torque, about 300 foot-pounds of torque. Engine's the B47 engine. It's a fairly, a fairly quiet engine. This is a rear wheel drive as well. It's not X drive. And I think my question would be, if you're coming from a three litre, um, like a bigger car's a three litre, would the two litre suffice? Now, it's got plenty of pickup. Like I say, 7.8 seconds to 60 is a very respectable time and because it's got because it's a diesel it's got all that low down grunt it does pick up very well it kicks down when you need to yeah. it goes well it goes very well so this particular car has got a few packages it's got the comfort package it's got the visibility package which gives you the adaptive headlights that change the direction where you go in corners and dim and so on and so forth when cars are oncoming Headlamp washers, uh, headlamp wash as well. Um, a nice feature that the Tora has, uh, what this, this particular Tora has, it, it is an option, it's about £1,295, is the Pano sunroof. Now, the Pano sunroof adds so much visibility and light to the car, and I think because it's such a long car, you need that to give that extra, extra light and sort of airiness to it. The saloon I had last week didn't have the, didn't have the Pano. But in terms of space in here, I don't know why, you know, estates aren't more popular because they offer loading capability of, say, an SUV, but the driving dynamics of a car. Now, there are obviously a lot of reasons, there are obviously reasons why people go for an SUV over um, a car if they might be in a more rural setting, so if they're in um, somewhere where they do more, you know, they, they, they do take the car off-roading maybe, I don't know, but how many people take their car off-road, their SUV off-road? Uh, let's turn these seats down. It's cooking, cooking my arse. Uh, there we go. Um, so, so really, it comes down to the factor of, do you like a car? Do you like the dynamics and driving dynamics of a car? Or do you like the, the, the high riding position? Now for me, I'm more of a car person. I like to sit lower to the, to the, to the road. The car naturally inherently is gonna handle better. It's not gonna have as much body roll. And the fact that you can get X-Drive in these cars as well, 
you know, you, people used to think you're going to get stuck if you're in a rear-wheel drive BMW, and actually you've you've got just as much capability as a, a four-wheel drive. Haven't got the ground clearance, of course. Um, but how many SUVs do you actually see go off road? So it's another day, another review, more rain. Every time I come to shoot a review, it just wants to rain. It's really, it's really frustrating because tomorrow the forecast is meant to be really good. But here we are again in the lovely Herefordshire countryside and absolutely lashing it down. So one question to you guys out there who are looking at buying a BMW going forward, do you need adaptive suspension? Now this particular car hasn't got adaptive I don't think it's that bad. It drives really, really well. It handles well. This has only got the 19s on it, so you've got bigger sidewall. So the um, yeah, there's the, there's more give in, in the ride quality and the comfort. The 20 inch obviously had really super low profile tyres, but it had that adaptive, so the ride quality was very good, even though it had those. But this, with the 19s, with the standard M Sport suspension, I think is perfectly acceptable, and I don't think. I would spec the adaptive if I had this particular wheel on the car. Maybe if I went for the V759s, the upgraded wheel, so the 530Ds come with that wheel as standard. If I went for that, then maybe I'd go for the adaptive suspension. But with these 19s, it's not that at all. So as I mentioned earlier, the car is weighing in around at 1635 kilos. And what that does is, it makes it very good on fuel. Combined cycle in this, 62.7 combined. Um, which again, for a heavy, very heavy car, is really good. The only thing I'd say is with this, this has got quite a few options. So it's a visibility pack, comfort package, M Plus package, pano roof, um, and if you add all those up, it comes to there and there about seven and a half, seven, seven two, something like seven thousand two hundred pounds, which takes this car up to almost fifty thousand pounds. So this is forty nine thousand, forty nine thousand two hundred and something for this car. Now, if you went for a 530, you would probably be in basic spec. You probably wouldn't be much, much off that. So it depends what's more important to you, whether you want to get a two litre and load it up with all the options, or whether you want to get yourself a five, um, 530D and keep it more, more of a basic car. I mean, the 5 Series can be very loaded with kit as standard anyway. So this has got the black Dakota leather, which is a standard option with the blue stitching, um, which is quite nice. It's like an M Sport blue colour. And you've also got the M Sport badges or, or, or sort of decals on the seat, which look quite nice. Blue stitching is sort of transferred around the car as well. Really nice feature. And all in all, the cabin is just a really nice place to be. So the colours that you can get this car in, so carbon black is a metallic colour. There's 675 pound black colour. There's also uh, Moonstone, which is like a grey, which I think is probably one of the top favourite colours in it. But there is also the BMW individual option, having one of these cars painted in pretty much whatever colour you want to paint. There is a spectrum of colours. But, um, you know, you'll pay anything in the region of about £4,000 for that option. But it does broaden the scope of uh, the colours. I think the colour palette on this car is fairly limited. You've got whites, blacks and greys, and then there's like a dark blue called Mediterranean blue. So. Once you've passed that, you know, if you want a red or, or a dark burgundy or, or a green, you haven't really got the options. So the fact that you can get an individual colour and you can get it painted in the colour that you want, it's quite a nice thing that BMW offer in their range. It handles really, really well. I'm happy to report this handles like a BMW should handle. Although it's a practical car, and that's the nice thing I like about it, is the fact that if you, if you go away from you know, a lot of people think when they have a family, they need to go away from that fun factor and get themselves an SUV, and that tall riding position. But you don't need to. You, you can drive a car like this that's actually going to give you all the load capacity that you need, all the storage you need. You can put a roof box on it, you've got the roof rails. But it's fun to drive, and, and, and that, for me, is the main appealing factor with a larger state car. Um, it's just... Effortless, even with this two litre engine, the performance is really good. And when it kicks down as well, it shuts you in the back with an absolute bucket load of torque.
Woohoo! Right then guys, thanks for watching. It's been really good today shooting this review of this 520D. More videos to come. If you're enjoying the content, give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you on the next one.